How you doing? This is Tiberi. We're going to take another uh, video today. Today we're going to look at how to perform an alternator output test. On this particular test we're going to use a VAT40. Now the object of this test is to determine if the alternator is outputting enough current measured in amps in order to recharge the battery and to maintain all the vehicle accessories while the engine is running. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook up the machine. I'm going to show you how it's done real simple and then uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to perform the test. So the first step in this procedure is if you're inside of a shop you want to make sure that you have an exhaust hose hooked up to the tailpipe because we will be running this car. I've already done that, that's set up. The second step is we're going to make sure that we can gain access to the battery and we're going to hook up the power and ground from the VAT40 to the battery. Alright, so as you can see where our battery is, our battery is located directly underneath this box. This box holds all our fuses and everything else and then relays for the entire electrical system for the powertrain. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this box. I've already moved the clips so it's pretty easy to access after that and there's also a support beam that runs across here but that's just been removed so we don't have to mess around with that during class. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this accessory box off, move it off to the side. And once I do that, you can see that I expose both the positive side of the battery the terminal and the negative and it is a side post battery which makes it often a little bit more difficult to try to get to as far as the clamps but it's not going to play that big of a deal with this okay so now what I got is I got my two leads off of the VAT40 I got my positive lead and I got my negative lead I'm going to go ahead and connect these directly to the battery terminals or to the side posts and our VAT40 should come to life shortly after that Alright, so there you have it. Both of our leads are connected to our battery. Alright, now that I got the battery connected to the VAT40, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my amp clamp, which is this green inductive clamp, okay, from the VAT40. And it's got the arrow on it, as you can see, and I'm going to try to clamp it around the output wire of the alternator. So my alternator is all the way back here. My output wire is this large red lead. You can commonly identify the output wire as being a large or heavy gauge wire. So one of the thicker wires that's out there, largest in diameter. And if you take a look and you move this boot back, you'll notice that the alternator's output wire is typically held in place by this uh, lug stud, uh, electrical lug stud. So it's got a nut on there. So really easy to find. So as long as you have good access to the alternator. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover that boot back up. I'm going to take the amp clamp, wrap it directly around the output wire, and make sure that the arrow points back towards the battery. So this is one of many ways to do it. Um, you don't have to do it this way. We could actually take the amp clamp, we could put it around the ground cables, all the ground cables going back to the battery. Uh, that's another appropriate way to do it. And there's nothing wrong between the two. It's just a matter of whatever's easiest. In this case, my battery's kind of tight, so it's hard to get to the negative wires on the battery. So I'm just going to go to the out output wire of the alternator, because it's easy to get to. I'll show you a scenario. Uh, at the end of the video where I would use the negative wires instead because the alternator is difficult to get to. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to take a look at the uh, VAT40. All right, so we're taking a look at the VAT40 and what you want to see is you want to take a look up here at the amperes and your volts. And then we have our volt selector, field selector, test selector. So we're going to do a basic charging system test. We're going to take this test selector, we're going to turn it over here to the blue charging scale. What that means is we're going to read this top scale right here, this blue scale. Now at this point in time, my car is not running. But you'll notice that this needle is already deflecting, so it's showing me a little bit above 20 amps. I'm right around 22, 23 amps. That's no good. That's a false reading. Because our car is not running, what I want to do is I want to zero this out. So I'm going to turn the zero adjust until I get that needle right in line with the zero. Okay. After that, I'm not going to touch that zero adjust at all. Okay, make sure my volt selector is on internal 18 volts, field selector is in the off position, test selector is at charging. So I'm going to read the blue scale on top, and then I'm going to read this green scale down here. Now when I start this vehicle up, I'm going to turn the overhead on, it's going to get kind of loud. But what's going to happen is, I'm going to rev the engine up to about 2,000 RPMs, I'm going to hold it there, and while I hold it there, I'm going to use the load increase, and I'm going to put a load on the battery 
which is essentially going to load the charging system as well. And I'm going to load the battery down to 12 volts. Once it hits 12 volts, I'm going to read how much output my alternator has to try to keep the battery charged up above 12 volts. I'm not going to hold it for any longer than an average 15 seconds, but for our demonstration purpose, 5 to 7 seconds is more than efficient for this test. Okay? Alright, so you can see right now with the car running, the alternator is already outputting roughly about 36 amps, and we're running at about a little bit above 15 volts, which is kind of high, but we're right around 15.1, so I wouldn't really worry about that. On average, a good alternator is going to output 2 volts above battery voltage, so you're looking at about 14.6. We're on the blue charging scale, our engine is running, I'm going to rev it up to 2000 and hold it, and then I'm going to load increase and bring my voltage to 12 and then read my alternator output. Okay, so right there what we saw, as soon as I got to 12 volts, or even before that, my needle here pegged past the 100 mark, which means this alternator is outputting over 100 amps of current. And because of that, what I want to do is I want to switch scales. I want to jump from this blue scale, which only goes to 100, down to this red scale that goes to 500. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select the starting position. So right now I'm reading the same thing, a little bit above. 30 amps of current, almost 40 amps of current. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do this again. Run at 2000 RPMs, load 12 volts and hold it at 12 volts and read my alternator output on the red scale this time. Okay, so as we can tell, we were right around the 140, 120 to 140 amps. So that's a good alternator, 12 volts at about 140 amps. So the next step, is to shut the car off, disconnect the VAT40 from the alternator, and we're just about done. So I'm going to show you a quick little video of how to hook up the VAT40 to a vehicle with an alternator that is difficult to find. All right, so on this one, this is a uh, 2003 Ford Escape. And what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna show you that uh, for demonstration purposes, the alternator is actually tucked all the way back here, it, down at the bottom of the engine block towards the axle shaft. So we're not gonna go all the way back there to try to find the output wire. That's just, it takes way too much time and you're just gonna be running the cables all the way down there, it, total waste. So instead, the easier solution is to just go right to the battery itself. So I'm going to move this around a little bit here. I'm going to take a look at the battery. So this is our simple connection for an alternator output test if you don't have access to the alternator. Take your two leads, positive to positive, negative to negative, just like before. Battery terminal is a little loose. And we're going to take our amp clamp right here, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to connect this amp clamp directly around the negative wire. As good as you can, you're just going to make sure that that amp clamp closes up. Now that it's on there, we're good to go. The test is performed the exact same way as we did over there on the van. Okay, we just fire it up, 2000 RPMs, load increase to 12 volts, and then measure your current. After seven seconds, turn the load increase off, turn the car off, and you're done. And record all your data, okay? And no matter what, always compare whatever you get to factory specifications. You can find that on all data, Mitchell Proterman, or even try just Google searching it. Uh, chances are you'll be able to come up with it. Okay, thanks for watching.